Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, I got another media story for you, folks. What the hell is going on over at The View? <laughs> so, last week, the ladies of The View, they were hyping a big interview with Vice President Kamala Harris. And indeed, as they say in the biz, it was a huge get. Kamala just doesn't give a lot of interviews, and when she does them, they don't typically go all that well. There's plenty to press her on, in particular the treatment of Haitians at the border, given that by her own previous definition, the Biden administration's actions have been unconstitutional. Immigration is also supposed to be her main portfolio item, after all. I know you'll be shocked to learn I'm not a huge consumer of The View, but I was planning on checking out that interview after the fact to see if anything interesting happened. And indeed, something very interesting did happen. Shortly before the vice president's interview was set to begin, this little scene unfolded on set. Two of you to step off for a second. Okay. Anna and and uh, and, and we're going to bring Sunny you back later. Have to okay. leave. Yeah. Yes. And we'll tell you why. More information later. It's a tease. We'll so tell you why in a couple of minutes. So shall I introduce the vice president? Yes. Okay. So vice president. No. No. Nope. Okay. Shall we dance? Let's do a tap dance. Let's do a tap dance. <laughs> Since this is going to be a major news story any minute now, yeah. what happened is that uh, Sonny and Anna both apparently tested positive for COVID. No matter how hard we try, uh, these things happen. They probably have a breakthrough case and they'll be okay, I'm sure, because they're both vaccinated up the wazoo. You know, a lot yeah. of vaccines. So, uh, so halfway through the show, Sonny Hostin and Anna Navarro are informed they've tested positive for COVID. Joy and that other lady are then left scrambling for something to do while the crew backstage gets Vice President Harris set for a remote interview. That interview with the Vice President ultimately lasts like eight minutes, it involves about three actual questions, and is generally a pointless waste of time, a lot less compelling than the chaos and drama which had already unfolded. I have a lot of questions here. Chief among them, why in the world are you getting back COVID results in the middle of a live show? Surely with an interview of this level, and knowing how paranoid both the View team and certainly the White House are about COVID exposures, you must have gotten this test done with ample time to make sure your hosts and everyone else would be around the vice president were pandemic-free. Then things got even stranger. It turns out, Sonny and Anna, they didn't in fact even have COVID. After the initial positive result and their dramatic mid-show departure, they were given multiple additional tests that all found them to be COVID negative. So by chance, somehow, both received false positives in the middle of a live show. And not just any false positives. The White House required the host be administered PCR tests. That's the gold standard in COVID detection. Now, I did a little research on this, dear viewers, and it turns out that false positives and PCR tests are basically not a thing. Now, the PCR tests are very sensitive. They can detect trace amounts of the virus at the very beginning or very tail end of illness, even registering small amounts of dead virus. But if you got a positive result, you had some COVID in your system. So we're being told that not just one, but two hosts received stunningly rare false positives and were taken out of commission just long enough to create a lot of drama and tank the VP interview. What an incredible series of coincidences. On Monday, the show's executive producer came on purportedly to explain what happened, but didn't actually explain anything at all. I really want to acknowledge and apologize to, to Sonny and Anna because in the midst of all this chaos, they were put in this, uh, this position where they had this information put out on television. And then to make it even worse, it turned out not to be true uh, later on. And, uh, well, that's better if it was true, but not that it was. Yeah, it was that there was yeah. false positives. That it was false positives. Yeah. Yes, that it was false yeah. positives. Right. So <laughs> it was unfortunate that mistakes were made, but I can confidently say that we have very vigorous safety <coughs> protocols, that everyone is regularly tested. And I'm just so relieved that you guys are healthy, that everyone is healthy, and nobody was ever in danger. Mistakes were made. By who? What were the mistakes? Doesn't say. Now, the last part of the story is reported yesterday by Oliver Darcy at CNN, is that reportedly the vice president's office has not been able to get any answers out of them either. According to Darcy, the view had given an all clear to the White House on Thursday night before the interview, indicating that all of the host's PCR tests had come back negative. So the vice president's team was allegedly very confused and taken aback when suddenly mid-show, these positive COVID tests suddenly emerged. Crazy. Darcy writes that, according to a person familiar with the matter, the view has not been forthcoming with the vice president's office, leaving Harris's staff deeply concerned about what actually happened. Look, guys, I know this is not the most important story in the world, but this whole thing does not add up. Some piece of the puzzle is being hidden here. One more incident to add to the list where we are clearly not getting the full story from our supposed truth tellers. And look, 
Kamala Harris is vice president, and she certainly believes she might be the nation's next president. The press has precious little access to her. I want to know why one of the few opportunities to ask her some questions got so incredibly bungled and shortchanged by an incredible cascading series of coincidences. But isn't it nice how well this worked out for all the players involved? The View got some dramatic programming, fueling interest, certainly fueling ratings. The vice president got to technically do a big interview on a challenging week for the administration, but it only lasted eight minutes. The questions were easy with no time for follow-up, and the substance of our interview was utterly drowned out by the bizarre chaos that played out instead. A cynical person might even say that this could not have possibly worked out better for The View and for the vice president if they had planned it. So what do you think, Sagar? What do you think happened? 100% convinced it's a false. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.